My name is Lane Hensley and I'm one of the co-founders and owners of Odyssey Teams. All right, I'm gonna walk you through kind of the intro steps of how to set a group up to do the trust fall mat. It's actually very easy to get them started and you can focus on the key outcomes you're looking for from the trust fall. So I'm just gonna open it up and encourage my team to come on in and grab a hold of a handle. There's 20 handles on there, so just grab one, whatever comes natural to you. All right, now you've grabbed a hold and it's natural for you to grab it like this. It was on the ground. I want you to turn your hands around so you can see your fingernails. Elbows are at your side, so you have some shock absorption before you feel a pull forward. If a large person falls, and we should have maybe the tallest or largest person here fall, elbows are at our side, knuckles are up. When we catch their body weight, our arms go forward, and then our body might get engaged. One foot is well in front of the other so that we have some support this way. As they caught into the mat, hopefully if we share the load, and we should all share the load, it should be easy for all of us. Spotters ready? Spotters ready! Falling. Fall on! So we've safely caught the person. Everybody felt like they shared some of the load of that. Hopefully as the faller, you felt that sort of softer catch. It still has the care of catching someone, but without all of the potential hazards of the fall or hurting one of us. If he fell right into here with the jackknife technique, we're all gonna share it. I'm gonna ask you to actually fall not perfect a few times so we can see how that works, okay? Spot is ready. Falling. Fall. Spot is ready. Falling. Falling. All right, excellent, perfect. Okay, no problem, obviously it was easy for us to catch him. And this is a classic. We have him falling in this technique now and halfway through he's gonna panic and put his arms out to the side and we'll see if any of us get hit. All right, let's go, spotters ready? Spotters ready? Spotters ready. Falling. Falling. technique we're going to show you is what's commonly referred to as the zipper truss fall catching technique. Now some of the things you want to be mindful of here obviously is if we break through, the person's body breaks through here and potentially all of the body weight is on one person. This is a very typical truss fall looking technique. Now me as the faller here, I'm the biggest hazard to you guys, my weight. And potentially if my weight goes on one person I'm going to end up on the ground, right? Many of you are facilitators, you've seen these things happen. So when I fall, I'm gonna have to lock my hands like this, wrap it in like this. I'm facing here and I better absolutely stay in that position and fall straight, stiff as a board. Well, what happens? When the person gets scared, they break their hands like this. Creates me being really wide and bang, I nail somebody in the nose. Happens, right? The other thing that happens, maybe I maintain this position, but as I start to fall, I give it this, the jackknife fall, right? And this part of me, ends up right there on one person. You guys are of no help to us. And bang, I end up on the ground, the outer limits of my mosh pit. Everyone instinctively steps back and I'm on the ground along with a few of you. Spotters ready? Spotters ready! ready. Oh God, I wasn't watching the head. <laughs> okay, and you guys pack that in, bring your mosh pit in here like this. Nice and tight, a little close to the left. Now we do an elbow check. Elbow check. Okay, making sure that when he's going to fall straight, stiff as a board, everybody's thinking, I got him. And even in the very best scenarios, this is going to have some potential risks. If he l does the jackknife, he's going to put his rear right on one person here, potentially, and they're going to have the majority of his body weight. Let's talk about the mat itself. It comes in this nice little sort of carrying case, but it's actually the mat. I'm gonna just open it up real quickly. And whenever I'm with a group and I'm just opening this up, I just encourage them to come in and grab a hold of one of the handles with the blue side up. So it's very natural, there's 20 handles on here. When you're doing the truss fall, you're gonna use 18 of them because the two that I'm holding here, let's say, are the two that are gonna go right up against your falling platform or your ladder. The handles themselves are the typical kind of handle that you find on a wheelie or pull cart or a large duffel bag and they are attached <clears throat> with strapping. They go all the way across the mat in both directions, basically creating a sort of cargo net. 
Each of these stitches, uh, the stitching device and machine that they use for this is the same that they use for a rock climbing harness. So we've really overbuilt all of these seamings and essentially, so now we've got a cargo net with canvas or cordura in between so that nobody gets entrapped or at all entangled into the mat, creates a really safe place for them to land. Okay, so Todd and I are gonna show you how to fold up the truss ball mat. Basically, you take it in quarters. So we'll take that back a little bit, back a little more maybe over there. And then this one's gonna come in right to these handles. So, and then we're gonna flip it one more time. We're just doing little folds now. It should come like this, so it has a sort of memory to it. Holding that over, it's gonna reveal the Velcro straps. So instead of it coming in a bag, it creates sort of its own carrying case. And you're good to go.